The nun's little feet kept shaking as her body slowly rose from the elevator. She was delivered to God in front of the crowd and was about to be saved by God. After the performance, her mother asked her why she was shaking her feet. It's not supposed to move when she's playing a dead person. Benedetta said she had seen Jesus. As Jesus' wife, she had to run to him. The mother had nothing to say. After all, Benedetta had claimed since she was a child that she could see illusions. Benedetta was born into a wealthy merchant family and from an early age showed a talent for being a nun. A group of robbers took her mother's gold chain. She told the robbers to return the gold chain or the virgin would punish them. The robbers weren't afraid at first until a yellow warbler flew in. Benedetta pointed to the warbler and said it was proof that the virgin had helped her. Then a piece of bird poop fell on the robber bald heads. The robbers believed Benedetta and returned the gold chain. Then the family came to the convent. Her father said that his daughter, Benedetta, had almost died when she was born and that God had saved her. So he wanted to dedicate Benedetta to God. But in the Renaissance, nuns were seen as a priesthood. It was not uncommon for people to make up stories about miracles in order to become nuns. So after some haggling, her father promised to donate 100 ducats a year to the convent. Benedetta finally became a nun. She had to be free of all desire. She wore the simplest clothes and lived in the smallest room. But she was used to luxury villas and she was not used to such a humble abode. So she stole away to pray in front of the Madonna. But the statue suddenly collapsed and crushed her underneath. When the nuns heard the noise and came to see Benedetta not crushed, some of them said it was a miracle. They all looked at Benedetta with a hint of respect. Abbas Falicita didn't care, but dismissed the crowd. But Benedetta has discovered the benefits of being deliberately mysterious. She slowly became a witch. Eighteen years later, Benedetta became Abbas Felicita's right-hand woman, claiming to be Jesus' wife through various miraculous events. Benedetta often performed on stage as the beautiful Virgin Mary. The appearance of this woman reinforced her determination to become a bride for Jesus Christ. The woman's belt is hooked with this stick by her own father to take her home to be beaten. She clung to the nun's legs and asked her to save her, but she accidentally trips the nun. An old man kicked away the stick and saved the poor woman. Artolomia asked Abbas to make her a nun. Abbas said a woman with no money can't be a nun, and of course Bartolomia had no money. Her father took her in his arms and wanted to bring her home. After all, there were brothers at home waiting to bully her. Sister Benedetta couldn't stand it and asked her rich parents to buy the poor girl. Bartolomia became a novice nun. When Bartolomia bathed through the curtain, Benedetta saw her sexy body and had an evil thought. Then she saw Bartolomia's bruises all over her body. When she learns that Bartolomia has been brutalized by the men in her family, she is overcome with compassion and can't help but compliment her on her beauty. There's a hint of ambiguity between their eyes. The exchange is interrupted when Christina, Abbas' daughter, approaches. But when they part at bedtime, the passionate Bartolomia suddenly kisses Benedetta goodbye. The next day, during the court meeting, Bartolomia crept up behind Benedetta and teased Benedetta with her hands. Benedetta suddenly had a vision. A swarm of snakes was attacking her to punish her for the sins that had grown inside her, in order to prevent her from falling into the abyss of her desires. Benedetta decided to punish the perpetrator. She asked Bartolomia to take the spindle out of the boiling water with her hands. The brave Bartolomia did so, and her hand was burned. This made Benedetta's mind even more troubled. She was burning with desire. No one knew what ailed her, so they tied her to the bed. At night, Bartolomia comes to her bedside and unwraps the bandages from her hands to accuse her of cruelty. But Bartolomia thanked Benedetta for having saved her. She kisses her again. Benedetta saw the vision again. She dreamed that Jesus saved her when she was being violated by soldiers. But when she got closer, she realized that it wasn't Jesus and that he was going to brutalize her. The next moment, she awakens from the vision with a manic episode. Bartolomia volunteers to take care of her. This time, Benedetta finally stops running away from her emotions and takes Bartolomia's hand and apologizes for the hurt she caused Bartolomia. At night, Benedetta has another manic episode. By the time Bartolomia realizes that something is wrong, she has blood on her hands. The woman suddenly spoke in a male voice. Then she opened her arms and warned the crowd with the scars on her palms that if anyone dared to hurt her, Jesus would not spare them. The people were frightened by her. Then a woman came forward and took off her black hood. The people backed away in fear. It turned out that the woman was infected with the black death, and she said that the envoy had brought the plague. The envoy, enraged, 
sends Benedetta to the stake to be burned at once. But the people were outraged, believing Benedetta to be the Virgin Mary. They flocked to the execution ground in revolt. The envoy tried to escape, but the people caught him and stripped him of his clothes. As you can see, his skin is festering. It is true that he brought the plague into the city, so the people killed him immediately. Benedetta and Bartolomea escaped. Nah, don't think for a moment that Benedetta was wronged. In fact, she's a very skillful drama queen. She'd even cut herself in front of the Virgin Mary to gain power. Plus she's got a really good baritone voice. The priest was convinced that this woman was the wife of Jesus and that she was the virgin who should be venerated by all. So the priest richly installed Benedetta as abbess of the monastery. The former abbess even gave her the title of abbess herself. Benedetta was finally in control and so she lived happily ever after with her lover, Bartolomea. But their happiness didn't last long. Sister Christina came forward to report that Benedetta's stigmata were cut from glass, but no one could prove that she had seen it with her own eyes. Benedetta took her chance and pretended to be possessed by Jesus again. Christina had to be flogged to get the demon out of her. This time, Christina was whipped and humiliated instead of succeeding in her accusation. This victory made Benedetta even more reckless. She and Bartolomea became more intimate and affectionate, but everything they did was watched by the meticulous Abbas Felicita. That night, Abbas Felicita's daughter Christina jumped to her death in the convent. Unable to bear the humiliation of the flogging, Abbas Felicita finally stops giving in and gets into a fight with Benedetta. She then traveled to Florence to see the papal envoy to file a complaint against Benedetta. Florence was in the midst of the Black Death, the bubonic plague. In order to avoid this accusation, Benedetta starts acting again. This time she faked her death to the highest decree. Everyone was deceived by her. When the envoy arrived at the convent, the nuns, dressed in angel wings, were performing Benedetta's ascension. Judging that she didn't have the plague, the envoy anointed her eyes with holy water. The next moment, Benedetta opened her eyes and woke up to say that Jesus had brought her back to earth. But that didn't fool the envoy. The envoy put her on trial anyway. Abbas Felicita accused Benedetta of having sex with Bartolomea. It was a disgrace to the abbey. Bartolomea refused to admit it, but she was tortured by the envoy and eventually betrayed Benedetta. Bartolomea was expelled from the convent and reviled by the people, and Benedetta was taken to the stake to be burned, but she managed to get the envoy killed by inciting the people. But at the end of that story, Benedetta could not escape the church's punishment. She was imprisoned in a convent until she died at the age of 70. The movie, Benedetta, is based on a true story from the Renaissance. The heroine is a fervent believer and a master manipulator. She's the only well-documented lesbian in the history of religion. A top-notch scam must first offer herself as a sacrifice to the scam. The heroine is willing to brutally harm her body for the sake of lust and power. I'd have to say she'd be an Oscar winner today for that kind of acting.